wind chill factors well below freezing in the early morning hours here in Fayetteville. They lined up. They have poured in to Bud Walton Arena, the student section on fire. It is Arkansas taking on number 10, Kentucky. As if this atmosphere weren't difficult enough for the Cats, this of course is what happened to them on Wednesday. They lost a 14 point second half lead and Jermaine Kuznar at the buzzer. South Carolina takes out Kentucky 81 to 78. And only a few days later, now on the road in another difficult atmosphere. And we told you, the students, they were lined up. They greeted the Wildcats as they left their morning shoot around. The booze cranked down from the student waiting line, and they saved their most special and loudest booze for the head coach. That was last out of the building. All of this makes for a very fun atmosphere, a great place to be. Bob Shoes and Dick Vitale. Chris Button will join us in just a moment. Every Saturday game, Dick, in this building sold out for the season, but there's a different kind of energy when Kentucky's in the building. Well, everywhere go, Kentucky goes, they bring out a hoops frenzy, but this place is electric, and they don't need Kentucky here to have a great environment because they really get after it. The student body really gets after it. They're behind us, and they are been electric here all afternoon before the game even started. The key in the game when we look at it, can Arkansas find a way to negate the advantage of the size of Kentucky? Already a scrap for the basketball as we are underway here at Bud Walton Arena. They're going to try to pack it up. They really lead the nation defensively in shutting down the three. Stand up front. They do a great job giving help on the post. They give up a lot of size at every position. The multi-talented Mason Jones, he can play anywhere on the floor. Big time player. Mason Jones and Isaiah Joe both average better than 17 points a game. The only duo for a power conference team in all of college basketball. He's got two guys that average 17 or more, but the first shot for Arkansas missed by Jimmy Witt. Higgins tries to go coast to coast, and he's met at the rim. It is thrown back by Witt. Pulling up, and there's a piece on the jump shot by Mason Jones. Did a great job defensively right there to shut Jones down, but also a great block shot on the interior by Witt. Witt is an old school player who just knows how to play. Hagen's left alone, and he makes Arkansas pay. They do such a great job, Arkansas, defending the three. They've decided in this game, they're gonna see if Kentucky can make some threes. And Hagen's right there showed that he can. He really struggled against South Carolina. He was not Hagen's defensively. Jones on the drive. Scored Richards the will be Scored called the for goaltending. They look to pound the ball. They're going to try to get inside to the interior to Richards. As the comes over from the weak side, no doubt about it. No doubt. Good call. Boy, what a great environment, man. I haven't been here in years. Used to come here when Nolan Richardson had this place. Unbelievable. And a run, press, and score. They were incredible. See, they're playing off Higgins. And double up in the post. Another turnover. Nick Richards has it taken away again. They went twice to the post and two times come up empty. Great job. Musselman does a terrific job as a coach. Has great understanding of the game and how to get the most out of his people. Bailey knocks down a three. They can make threes. And that's one area they have to excel on. John Calipari was not happy in the second half with the effort of his team. He felt that they didn't play with the kind of toughness that you need to play, especially in SEC competition.
Richards again. This time the jump hook is there. Well, that time they had a good angle. They did a great job with good efficiency and execution. And that's what John was telling us before the game, you and I, how to enter the post for more to center against them. Joe knocks down another triple. And Isaiah Joe can flat out shoot it. He's a premier three-point shooter. All right, Rich, thanks very much. And we welcome you to Bud Walton Arena, where the atmosphere is electric. Every Saturday game here at Fayetteville is sold out. But there's a different kind of buzz when Kentucky's in town. The student section was lined up in the early morning hours in below freezing wind chill factors waiting to get in here. And they have been loud. And Dick Vitale, Arkansas, is off to a good start. Well, off to a good start also. But Kentucky attacked right there, got second and third opportunities. Offensive glass can be a real problem and a dilemma. Coach Musselman told us before the game he's really concerned with that area of the game. Extra pass, Isaiah Joe, hits another three. He can shoot the three, that's the second one he's made. Nothing but Nyla, oh, they love it here, these Razorback fans, they are excited about this team. The Hogs are three for three from behind the arc to start, four of six overall from the field. Stepping back and connecting from the wing is Ashton Hagens. That's his second three to start. Tell you one thing, Kentucky making some threes. And right now, when you think about it, Arkansas leads the nation defensively in defending the three. But they told us they're going to play a little off the threes, see if Kentucky can make them and try to pack it inside against Richards. Sills lost his balance in a foul call. Take a little bit of offense right here. There's the three ball, baby. They can shoot it. And if you want defense, they can play defense too. Look at them jamming on a post inside. Turn over, baby. On ESPN. Talk about an atmosphere. Bob Shoes and Dick Vitale, Chris Budden here in Fayetteville at Bud Walton. Look, they sell out all of their Saturday games in this building, but you knew it was going to have a special kind of juice today with Kentucky in town. Well, you know, when Kentucky comes to town, everywhere there's a frenzy. But this environment doesn't need Kentucky. They're fired up on this team. This is really a great moment for them in Arkansas basketball. They really love Muslim, and they love the fact of what they're doing. They play really hard. They're small ball, but they can flat out shoot the three, and they defend. And this is a game, and I think you pointed it out to Coach Musselman, win this game, and Arkansas will probably get the national recognition that they deserve. They really should be a ranked team. Yeah, they should be. I had them in my rankings last week, but they didn't make it. I had them in the 20, I believe, in the nation. Bottom line is, when you look at this basketball team, a lot of it's because of schedule. But you think about it. Their two losses lost a heartbreaker to a very good LSU team. Lost last few seconds of the game. Watford made a big play for LSU. Manning blocked some shots at the end. And then they had a five-point lead with 40 seconds to go against Western Kentucky. They literally could be undefeated. Quickly left alone. That's off the heel. See, that's Battles four and a one by Nick Richards. See, that's what they're worried about. Offensive rebound. Hagens penetrates, gets caught in midair, somehow bounces it to Richards. He's tied up and traveled. He walked. Good defensive pressure on Richards inside. You know, against LSU, they were out rebounded. Think about this. 53 to 24. They had 23 offensive rebounds, LSU, and had to go to the wire to beat them. Witt rises up. And the rebound pulled down by Tyrese Maxey. With that 30 in their last game against Vanderbilt. Came out of SMU, started here at Arkansas. Hagens to Richards. Yes. That's the dilemma. And that's exactly what Coach Musselman told us before the game. Size on the interior, entry passes to Richards could be a problem. It's great to see basketball really 
up big time here like it is today. These people, there's been a buzz around this city like you couldn't believe last night when we were in town and today. Mason Jones fadeaway won't go. Hagen's down to Richards. You can see the game plan to play through Nick Richards and That's try and take advantage of the size down low if they can. They're trying to front and give help on him. Hagen's floats one up. That won't go. Hard down to the deck is Isaiah Joe. And a foul will be called on EJ Montgomery. Tell you one thing, both these clubs playing hard. You know, Kentucky coming off that loss. Sometimes that's the one thing you don't want to face a John Calipari or a Mike Shashevsky, who later plays against Louisville. You don't want to play them in the situation after a loss. Shot clock down to eight for Arkansas. Witt picks up his dribble. Back to the corner to Sills. That's short. You know, Sills last year shot the three pretty well for Mike Anderson. This year he's more driving the basketball, but he's capable of getting hot with that three. Sestina, talk about hot right off the bench, knocks down a three. Well, they want that out of him. That's his strength. Came here to weigh a buck now, stretch the defense, got hurt about a month ago. And Nate Sestina was second team all Patriot League last year, averaged about 16 a game. Adriel Bailey draws the foul, so he will go to the free throw line. And physicality, Chris Button, was a buzzword for John Calipari. It is. He really challenged his team's toughness after that buzzer beating loss to South Carolina, so much so that he was watching film on the flight home. He brought all the players to the front of the plane and said, I want you to watch this. See how our opponents are grabbing space. They're boxing out. You guys are just collapsing. Our opponents have called us one of the toughest teams in the country. That did not show up against South Carolina. So he challenged them to show up today they watch the film they recognize it and they know they need that today tell you one thing they had a 14 point lead i turned the tv off and i went to watch something else <laughs> and came back about an hour later and i couldn't believe that they had lost that game now that little head bob by hagan's there as jones gave it up they are taking a look at the elbow swing on the drive to see if there may have been a flagrant foul that was missed Anthony Jordan on the headset right there that little elbow I, well, it, it, I mean you might you might almost call Hagen's for a flop I'm not sure he was even hit oh wow Well, I think they're breaking up the flow of the game. I think you can make that call a lot sooner. I mean, break up the flow of the game. Using the monitor is great. You want to get things right. But I really think sometimes you've got to make a call and make it efficiently and effectively. And you go to the monitor and do it quickly. Well, Patrick Evans is going to come over and explain it to us. The official terminology used after that replay review, it was a basketball play. Yeah, just a simple play. You can see that right away. Takes too long. I think it breaks the rhythm of the game up. As John Calipari and his brain trust. I have an idea. Go ahead. I'm not just for replay in basketball. I mean replay across the board in all sports. I could solve replay tomorrow in all sports if they let me. I know you, 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 go, you go to the monitor in any sport. We put a 60-second clock on television. When that 60-second clock hits zero, a decision. buzzer goes off at the football stadium, at the hockey rink, in the basketball arena, whatever, and you have to make a decision. And you know what? If you didn't make a decision or see something within those 60 seconds that's definitive, definitive enough to change the call on the floor, then it wasn't definitive enough, hey, and you just stay with the call you made. You know what? I think you want to be like a president or a commissioner of a conference. That's what I'm you talking about. To, I mean, you don't want to work next to me anymore. You don't want to do games. You want to get into the big hierarchy. Now, I, well, I like what you're saying, though. I like to hang out with the people that are in the tax bracket that you hang out with when you're not <laughs> hanging out with me. That's my goal. Oh, wow. Think about Arkansas. I think about those great teams. Corliss Williamson, Corey Beck, 
Scotty Thurman with the big shot to win the national championship. 94. Nolan Richardson now in the Hall of Fame. You know, Mike Anderson, let's get this out here. He did a good job here. He was here eight years. But the bottom line is sometimes a separation is good for everybody involved. He's doing a good job now with St. John's, bringing back spirit there. Quickly gets the shot back after it was blocked by Adriel Bailey. Nice fake. And now a mid-range shot, and that is perfect for Johnny Juzak. They think he can shoot the ball. He hasn't shot well in game action, but he's getting some minutes now, and they want him to do what he does best, shoot the rock. Well, he averages 1.7 points per game, so he's already ahead of his per-game average, and here he is weaving out of trouble. He got five rebounds the other day in about six minutes of action. That'll get the eye of John Calipari. And John's going to play guys that can perform, simple as can be. You don't care about your reputation coming out of high school. You got to do it on the court. Take away. Down low. Good hands for Arkansas as it was turned over by Keon Brooks. Harris spins, sets up Bailey. That's a little too strong. Bailey, a shop locker, good athlete, very active player. They're going to get Kentucky's best shot here today, Arkansas. After a loss, you always get them playing with a little chip on their shoulder. Sestina to... down low, jump hook, comes up short. And a nice wall off by Bailey. They did a good job defensively, forcing him to take a really tough shot on that angle that he had. Arkansas has not knocked down a field goal since we had about 16 and a half minutes to go in the first half. And they nearly turn it over there. Nice fake. And the finger roll is pure for Mason Jones. I'll tell you one thing, he's so versatile. He can score in many ways, very Talented player. He's had 42 in a game this year. Last game, he won, I think he was 0 for 7 at 7 points and 8 rebounds against Vandy. Left hand off the mark for Keon Brooks. Jones leads him in almost every category. Steals, assists, scoring, plays all over, can play anywhere on the floor. It's like a point forward. Bobby can handle the rock. This is a big game for both these teams. Arkansas trying to get the respect nationally. Kentucky tried to come back after that loss. Shot clock at five. Mason Jones tries to turn the corner, gives it up to Sills. Hangs, comes up short. A lot of contact. Crowd looking for a call, no whistle. Oh. Flying down the other end. Higgins hit the back of the rim with a dunk attempt, but a foul call. But they missed the foul down there against Arkansas. That's exactly what Desi Sills just said to Anthony Jordan. I got fouled at that end, and now you call us at this end. He had a legit argument. A two-point lead for Kentucky midway through the first half. And ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Energy on the go. Hey, Coach. Good job you're doing. Thank Great you. to see you. Step up! Step up! Get back! Load up! Hands! Hands! Get the hands! Eric Musselman kind enough to wear a microphone for us today and give us a little peek behind the scenes. And I think what John Calipari said to him is what you said at the start, and I think what anyone would say if they looked at the job Musselman has done here in Fayetteville. He's been a terrific breath of fresh air for the program. Yeah, no question about it. He's brought a lot of excitement here with the team. And I'll tell you this, when you look at Eric, his dad, Bill, was something else, man. I coached against his father. His father, he's talking about intensity and a passion for the game. And it's rubbed off on his son. And now it's rubbing off on his younger son. His younger son's on the staff. We met him at dinner last night, these two young kids. Well, Eric Musselman has coached just about everywhere that you can coach professionally. He's been in the G League, he's been in the CBA, he's been in the NBA, he coached two years in the USPL, obviously throughout the NBA, college basketball as well, did a great job at Nevada, now here at Arkansas, well-traveled, but a really good coach. Well, he's a basketball junkie, he's a lifer. My buddy Richie Adamato sitting in the crowd here, knows him really well. Richie came with me here, former NBA coach, and he's just like Mr. Musselman. They eat, sleep, and drink the game. It's a passion. You gotta have passion, Mr. Wachusi. I'm trying. Jones, <laughs> a little too strong. 
Jones is right there. Out of bounds, and it will stay with the Razorbacks. Coming up next on ESPN, 6 Eastern, it's number three, Duke, hosting number 11, Louisville. It's a sonic blockbuster at Cameron Indoor, a matchup of the top teams in the ACC. As soon as we're done here in Fayetteville, a terrific doubleheader back-to-back here on ESPN. Also a matchup probably for player of the year in the conference, Jordan Warren, and certainly the kid carry has been terrific for Duke as a diaper dandy. So that's a heck of a matchup, Jay, Dan, and company on the game. A lot of patience, a lot of trying to drive. If they see any kind of gap or seam, good ball movement. Reggie Cheney slips one to the corner. Jalen Harris, oh, he had wit going back door, but the ball was kicked. And that you should know, take the shot clock back up, and it will to 20. Key to any good offensive system, Bob, is you got to get ball movement. We saw an example there, just happened to miss on a bounce pass, trying to drive it through for the layup. Auburn, by the way, lost two in a row now. Got beat today by Florida. Baylor hung on big time. They were in trouble, but showed a lot of guts and fortitude. Came back and beat Oklahoma State. Yeah, that was a gut check game for Baylor, considering the really difficult places they've had to play over the past few weeks. What a job he's done, Scott Drew. Terrific. A lot of people say, oh, the guy can't coach. A lot of criticism his way. They're going to be out of their mind. He's done a great job with that program. We're going to see him next Saturday night. As Hagen's off balance, puts oh. it up on the backboard. It's blocked oh. a couple of times. The second was goaltending as Cheney and Jimmy Witt both tried to reject Kentucky shots. Well, he's trying to get to the basket. You got bump. There's the block shot. And there's the goaltending right there. But next yep. week is the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Yep. Saturday good. night, we'll see Baylor and Florida, a Florida team that just beat number four Auburn is going to host Baylor. Yeah, and Florida beat them kind of easily. Florida, a very dangerous team. I still think they're capable of going on a spurt and get a real run. And this Kentucky group plays at Texas Tech. That is going to be a war and yeah, a fun game to watch. A steal as Maxi tries to go coast to coast. That'll be goaltending again. Goaltending once again and a good call. Maxi with the good steal. The one thing that Kentucky has, and really when you look at the makeup of their team, they got three outstanding perimeter players. If they play their A game, Maxi quickly and certainly Hagens, they're as good as any three some you can put in a perimeter. Then you talk about on the interior, if they get play from Richards and Montgomery to join those three, Sestino off the bench, they're as good as anybody in a run in the tournament. I mean, they can win six in a row in a tournament like anybody else can. Because there's a bunch of clubs out there that can do that. Wit in the mid-range. Arkansas is now one for their last eight, and they've fallen behind by seven. Higgins you know, wastes no time. A little too strong. Wit will push tempo the other way. You know, Wit missed that shot there. He didn't miss any practically against Vanderbilt the other day. There's a three. Splash down from the corner for Desi Sills. See, he's capable of shooting the three. Last year, he shot a little better than this year. His stats are not really good indicative of a three-point shooter, but he's very capable to go on a run. We know Joe and Jones can. High screen and roll. Richards was open in the lane for a moment. Now he finds the ball at the rim. A terrific little pocket pass from Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, Maxey made a great play driving the baseline. Nobody played him on the baseline. He went baseline. Had great vision in the field and knew where Richards was on the floor. Jones attacks and scores. I like Mason Jones. He's just a complete college player. Put him anywhere on the floor, he's going to find to help you to get to the winner's circle. Got a good environment, man. This place is electric. Love it. Love this kind of basketball. Be at the pigskin now. Get involved basketball. Put the pigskin away. Salute LSU and let's move on. Richards, a little too strong. Nice wall off by Reggie Cheney. Good job blocking out right there. They have to block out with their size. They're always in an attack mode. They got good athletes and they want to come after you. Kentucky's really played fairly, really well here early in this game. Mason Jones has Richards caught on a switch. Old school fadeaway and comes up short. I don't think he want that shot. I really don't think he'd want that shot. He'd like a better chance than that. Better opportunity with some ball movement. That's playground at its best. You don't need that. 
Maxi is bumped on his way to the goal. Under seven minutes to go in the first half, four-point lead for Kentucky. When we come back, Dickie V's chatter with Chris Budd. Chris got a question to ask you when we return. You ready? Welcome back to Bob Walton Arena. We are going to have a little fun with Dickie V. Dick, I have a question for you. It's called fortunate or unfortunate, and I'm going to ask you a question, see what you think about it. What do you think of the parity around college basketball, the number of number one teams that have lost, teams like San Diego State undefeated? Fortunate or unfortunate for college basketball? I think it's very fortunate. I really do. Yeah. Care to expand upon that oh, answer at all? Uh, I thought you wanted one more answer. I thought it was. You're, I don't you're the go king up. of one more you, answers. I, it's, very, <laughs> it's very, very fortunate. I think it's, it's a lot of excitement. I mean, I wake up every day. You don't know what to expect. One day, Purdue blows out Michigan State, 71-42. Then prior to that, Purdue gets waxed by Illinois, like 61-37. I mean, it's unbelievable what goes on. I think it's great for the game. Quickly with the shot clock wanding down. Too strong off the backboard. A fight for the loose ball. And a foul is going to go against E.J. Montgomery, I believe. And that'll be his second. You know, I, you know, I think when you look right now, there's at least about 16 teams out there that can get the right pairings, the right matchups, and win like six in a row. We have no dominant team. It's very obvious. Even Gonzaga, who I think tonight's going to have a little tough time with BYU. Early foul trouble for John Calipari to worry about. E.J. Montgomery and Maxi both have two apiece with over six minutes to go in the first half. Cheney. Shuffled his feet, so there's an Arkansas turnover. That's their fourth. If Arkansas is going to leave here with a W, they're going to have to make some threes. There's no question about it. That's got to be their strength here to offset the size of Kentucky. Well, they're four for their first five, but yep. Kentucky's just about perfect as well, and that's high percentage for Nick Richards. Ted Richards is going to have a big day here. Going to have a big day. They're going to make him really, you know, struggle a little bit at times, but there's only so much you can do with a guy who has talent and that size and that much of an advantage with his size. Fade away and a little too strong for Jalen Harris. Tell you one thing, Richards has made a tremendous improvement from the beginning of the year. He has really stepped up his game and stock has gone up. Sestina, nice the extra pass to the corner, and knocking another one down is Johnny Juzang. That's his second bucket here in the first half. That's his strength. He's going to get a lot more PT. We've got to credit Sestina. Excellent pass right there. Good ball movement. John Calipari and his staff had a love watching that. Mason Jones attacks, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, a picture is worth a thousand words. And you can just see the size advantage oh, that Richards that. has wow. compared to all the other players on the floor. No question. No question. That size is such an advantage. Plus, he's a little mobile, and he really knows how to finish around the basket now. The interesting point, though, that John Calipari made pregame, and you reiterated it when we first came on, how dangerous Kentucky might be in the tournament because they have three legitimate point guard-type players they're really hard to guard. Yeah, they got three outstanding guards. You're talking about Maxie, Higgins, and quickly. And if they play their A game, <coughs> they're tough to deal with. And then if you could factor in size. If they can ever get Montgomery to be as good as what many people think that he could be, that'll be a big plus for them. All right, now Montgomery's averaging a little over seven points and about six rebounds a game. Tell you right now, Bob, in this game, <coughs> next five minutes are going to be really big here for Arkansas. They can't allow Kentucky to go on a spurt here and get that double-digit lead at halftime. Look at the difference inside. Look at the size right there. They're going to pound it into him. Oh, Blocked. good luck. Richards squared up, and he was rejected by Bailey. Good help side. That's Bailey's strength. Isaiah Joe, tough fade away. That hit the backboard first as he was blanketed by Emmanuel quickly. Quickly at the other end, left alone. Long rebound to Sestina. Tell you one thing, again, second and third opportunities. Richardson going strong in that last opportunity. You got to attack the. Can't give Kentucky second and third opportunities. The long rebound, you got to come down with that long rebound. Hagens crosses over. 
He's contested. That might be a shot clock violation. It is. That never hit the rim. Yeah, good call right there. See, right now he's got post position. You got to want the ball to go up strong. He did not go up strong right there. And Bailey, who can really jump, his mom, I guess, sent the message that when he was 14 years old and watching TV, they're watching TV and I was calling the game, just someday, son, he's going to call one of your games. And there he is, my man, Mr. Bailey. The last two or three threes by Arkansas went not really good threes. Oh, he had one right there. Extra pass to Harris. Jalen Harris hits a three. Nice ball movement again. A lot of good things happen, Bob. It's an old cliche in basketball. Move the ball. Here come the Razorback fans. They're standing up. They want to get them going, baby. They want to go in halftime a little on the bow on their side. Higgins with a nice fake. shot fake, cruises to the goal, can't connect, and Richards has it swiped away by Mason Jones. That's been one of the big concerns of John Calipari from last year. Higgins would make great drives and not finish at the rim. This possession's big here. And we're down nine, down to five. Jalen Harris started every game last year for Arkansas, comes off the bench this year, but he has that calming effect sometimes at the point guard spot as Witt can't knock down the elbow jumper. He normally makes those shots. He's had a good year for them, had 30 in the last game, and had 30 without a three. That's a rarity. They got three guys on the team, 30 or more at one time. Quickly. The floater is good. And he was very quick. Quickly was quick. Quickly is quickly determining a real outstanding role for Kentucky. What? Quickly <laughs> is quickly. Okay. I'll tell you that. He's a good player. <laughs> and oh! the three. Oh! Score the bucket. Mason Jones knocks down a triple, and it looks like we've got a Kentucky foul away from the ball in the lane as well. But this could be a big momentum change with 2.11 to go here in the first half. And they know it, the way they're celebrating. Look at the jubilation. Got the crowd all fired up. Oh, I love these fans. We had a great time last night at Bordino's. We were all there having a blast. John Calipari thought this was a flop. Hard to tell Hard from to that tell angle it. away from the ball, but John Calipari's looking for a flop. John Calipari was easy to find for the fans early this morning. The student section. Let the coach hear about it after Kentucky's morning <laughs> workout. They were ready for this game all morning. And after a chance for Arkansas possibly to have a five-point trip. Bob Oshusen alongside Dick Vitale, Chris Budden with us as well. Now this Mason Jones three, that counts. And the foul you see on the left side of your screen was called on Nate Sestina. That foul also put Kentucky over the limit. That's their seventh. So Dick, not only does the three-pointer count for Mason Jones, but now it's a one-and-one one for Arkansas. They might score five on this trip. That could be a five-point situation. You don't want to love Mason Jones as a player. I'll tell you this right now. When they had the triplets here, those guys were unreal. All about 6'5". Sidney Moncrief was unreal. Marvin Delf, Ron Brewer. Eddie Sutton coached them. I believe in 78, they were in the Final Four, if my memory tells me right, in 78, and Kentucky won the national championship. Joe B. Hall blew a chance for two points right there. Could be a four-point turnaround. If they score now, you just give up two at the charity strike. You can't do that when you try to play against a team that's highly rated like Kentucky. Sestina in the mid-range, way short. They're always in a push mode when you look at, look at the way they attack. Jones look at the way they it attack. up. Bailey, oh, you gotta off make the side that. rim. You gotta make that layup, Bob. You gotta make that layup. Kentucky basketball. Well, coming up on the Jeep halftime report, Reese Lafonso and Seth standing by. They'll update you on Lakers Rockets. Florida stunning Auburn as well and the big one later on tonight UFC 246 Connor McGregor is back 
He'll take on Cowboy. That's later on tonight. Cowboy's going to put him away. Cowboy, really? Yeah. That's Cowboy. your prediction? That's the Ball Dome Index for <laughs> UFC? Yeah. I didn't know the Ball Dome Index went to UFC. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a foul on the floor before the drive by what? Emmanuel quickly. That's going to go against Isaiah Joe. Tell you one thing, Coach Musselman would like to have back that last 30 seconds, missing two free throws and missing a layup. Four points right there in their hands. This guy can coach. Hey, no doubt about it, he flat out can coach. He knows how to get the most out of people. He gets people to play hard, and he knows how to break down strengths and weaknesses. Uh, right after Arkansas took it away, Mason Jones gives it right back. Trying to slip that screen, Sestina. They don't switch a whole lot. They get over the top, they fight over. Arkansas, no curl move. Juzang, the follow beautifully, finger rolled home by Keon Brooks. So guys like Brooks, certainly if he starts contributing to his ability, he's an outstanding scholastic star. Boy, did he make that look easy. Oh, look at the bump out there. Look at the bump. John Calipari again calling for a flop. And it looks like Arkansas again might get the whistle. And it looks like the monitor may come once again into play here. Let's see. Anthony Jordan. Let's I don't know if he's going to call his fellow officials over. Let's do the Bob with shoes and roll. Put the 60 seconds up there. Look at John Calipari. He knows I'm going to go in at halftime on a plus side big time. Look at him. He works that sideline. The man could recruit. Right now, you look at the Super 6 classes of recruiting. They're right there. Think about Kentucky, Duke, Carolina. I mean, you can't let a guy come right to the goal like that. Somebody's got to put a body on him, especially when you're giving up so much size. Well, coming up tonight, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. LeBron, AD, and the Western Conference leading Lakers will take on James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and the Rockets. That's our NBA Saturday primetime matchup. And let's see what Anthony Jordan comes away with. Free man huddle right there. They're over to 60 seconds, I can tell you that. The buzzer would have gone off in my replay system. And we're going to get the explanation oh. from Brian Shea. Go ahead. Well, there's the car we laughing off for kids battling cancer. All you beautiful fans, I know in Kentucky, you'll come out and support us. John Calipari does. Mr. Musselman said he's going to come. $100 a chance, and every dollar goes to the V Foundation for kids battling cancer. Only 1,500 chances. I mean, get in it. You're helping kids battle cancer, and you're giving yourself an opportunity to win a beautiful red Mercedes. Just go to DickVitalOnline.com. DickVitalOnline.com. Do that, get your 100 bucks, and help the V Foundation, and most of all, you may ultimately help someone you love. There's nothing worse than watching a child battle cancer. You gotta make these free throws. They're hurting themselves big time at the end of the game. That's the second one on one they missed on top of the layup. That foul on Hagens stayed with Hagens. Obviously, that's his second, and the officials came away from the monitor and said common foul. And once again, a one and one opportunity that Arkansas can't hit. Sestina dumps one underneath, and a foul will be called on Adriel Bailey. So that'll put Khalil Whitney at the line. I'll tell you one thing right there, Whitney with that good cut to the goal, you get foul. You know, you look at the SEC right now. You better start talking about LSU. They got a good basketball team. They get Javante Smart, certainly outstanding. Kyla Mays in the backcourt, Wadford, Manning block shots. I mean, they were undefeated right now in conference play. And Auburn right now, you go on a little bit of a slide. Keep an eye, though, on Florida. I think the Gators still going to put together a run and be a major, major factor. Arkansas, first half, six of eight from three. And yet they're down by seven. And nearly eight. And it might be more as that's knocked out by Mason Jones. So with the shot clock turned off, there's a chance here for Kentucky to hold for one. Looks like John Calipari will probably call the timeout he can't take with him to the second half. 
So that's just what he will do. And we will step aside for 30 seconds and come right back to Fayetteville. Here in Fayetteville, well, you were talking about the Arkansas coaching tree going all the way back to Eddie Sutton. He belongs to the Hall of Fame. No doubt about it. Eddie Sutton did a brilliant job everywhere he's been as a coach. Nolan Richardson is a Hall of Famer, deservedly so. I mean, he had this place rocking like you could not believe. And Mike Anderson did a solid job for eight years here. Juzang cut to the goal, but it looks like a foul may have been called before the ball was inbound. And it's going to go against Desi Sills. That's only the fifth team foul called against Arkansas here in the first half. I'll tell you one thing, Juzang's given a positive minutes. He really has. The one thing about Arkansas, they've made some good comebacks this year in games where they were down double digits. They they were in trouble here a little bit because number one, Kentucky's out rebound them 27 to 10, and they're three for eight shooting free throws. Foul called on Isaiah Joe. That was still a foul that Arkansas had to give. And in spite of the fact that Arkansas has only committed 16 fouls here in the first half, Sills has three of them, so he's on the bench. You gotta watch Zhang right here. He's feeling it right now, that kid. He knocked down two threes. Sestina. Oh, he bumped Hands one to quickly. Oh, There's another foul. Oh, that's a silly foul. No doubt about it, he fouled them. So that'll put Emmanuel quickly at the line to shoot three. Really did not play well here in the last two minutes of the game. Half right, right, right. When you look at Arkansas, last two minutes and a half, missing free throws, missing layup, and fouling unnecessarily right there. A lucky break, he missed that. Well, free throw shooting has hurt both teams. Arkansas is three of eight from the line in the first half, and that makes Kentucky two for five. I'll tell you one thing, when you get out rebounded 27 to 10, it's amazing that you're only down in single digits. And that's because they made the threes, kept them alive. They're going to have to come out. The first four minutes of a half, we always talk about it, is going to be so big to raise a back basketball. Second half, the first four minutes are going to dictate how this game is going to go. Harris right down oh. the lane to win, and he can't beat the timer as he fumbled a pass wide open. Should have been a layup to end the first half for Arkansas. Uh, Kentucky dominant under John Calipari following a loss. Time for the halftime report. Reese and the guys. Take away, Reese. Five hour energy. And welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Just about set for the start of the second half. The keys, well, we learned those keys from Eric Musselman as the first half progressed. And all too often, his team did not get stops. Rebound! 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 And all too often, Arkansas couldn't rebound, couldn't protect the rim. Out rebounded by Kentucky, 27 to 10 in the first half. Bob Shoes and Dick Vitale, Chris Budden just about set for the start of the second half. And I have to think that rebounding and protecting the rim must have been talked about in that Hogs locker room at halftime. You got to block out. You got to block out. See what I'm blocking out right now? Ow. You got to seal off, especially when you're smaller. So you're a wide body and I'm small. So I'm going to block you out big time. <laughs> you got to block out. 27-10. It's lucky you're in a game. You get rebounded dominant like that. Arkansas made six of eight from three-point land in the first half and yet still find themselves down 36-27. Three for eight on the free throw line, too, didn't help them at all. And I'll tell you this, Jimmy Witt's way better than what we watched here in the first half. He goes 0 for 4. The last game, as I said, against Vandy, had 30. He's had some great games for them. He's a veteran player, played at SMU, started off here at Arkansas, and now back finishing it with the Razorbacks. They need him to have a good second half. First four minutes are going to be big. Witt's got to step up a little bit for them. First time at home this year that Arkansas went to the locker room at halftime trailing. Here's Witt. Pulled the string. 
When your key players don't contribute against a quality opponent like Kentucky, that spells not a good formula for success. Kentucky moving the ball well. They have a little purpose on the court. Montgomery too strong in the post. Another offensive rebound. Richards is tied up. So the arrow will keep it with Kentucky. But again on the offensive glass, Arkansas. They can't keep Richards away from the, the basketball. That's going to be the problem all year for them. Size, size, size. LSU had 23 offensive rebounds. And they only had 24 rebounds total as a team when you looked at there it is, the second opportunity, gets the ball in low, and they score. Really tough to defend when you give that much size away to a talented post player. Well, Kentucky's on pace to have 18 offensive rebounds in this game. Wow. Jones down the lane, shoveled one off, loose on the floor. A 50-50 ball. Bailey tries to tap it back. And the hustle play by Hagens to tip it ahead to quickly. Can't knock down the open jumper. You know, it's not about effort. Certainly the Razorbacks are playing hard. They're just not big on the inside to deal with it. Richards with a push off. No. It looks like that one's going to go against Montgomery. That will be his third. See right there down low, nice little jump hook in the lane. More guys got to utilize that in the post. The reason we don't see a whole lot of it, guys don't want to post. All the big guys want to go play on the perimeter. Everyone wants to stretch the defense, shoot the three. I'm so tired of the three ball. I watch NBA games and I see 50, 55 threes again. I mean, it drives you nuts, man. That's not the game I saw when I grew up as a kid. Get the good shot, make the good shot. Everyone three. Let me shoot a three. Shoot a three. I mean, come on, man. Play basketball. Move the ball. Cut. The problem is you'd be the coach walking down the hall to the analytics department, and the analytics guys would say, unless you've got a dunk or a layup, I'd rather have a three because you shoot a much lower percentage of threes. Sure, it, you know, just it's a math problem. It is a math problem. It's no doubt statistically. And guys have become so good at shooting the three. They work on it. It's getting a little danger time here for Arkansas. They need a little momentum on their side, and they got to make something happen with their defense. Shot clock down to five. Maxi gives it up. Hagens. Comes up short, tapped out to Isaiah Joe. Bullet nice pass, pass underneath to Witt, the extra pass outside to Harris. In the lane, with the left hand able to finish is Reggie Cheney. Tell you what, Cheney finished on that. That was great basketball efficiency. It was so beautiful to see. It was like poetry, watching the ball move. These fans want it so bad. They're going to they help the fans by going out there and getting a spurt. There's the defense, of course, the turnover. They were, you talking about fired up. This place in Fayetteville all day yesterday, today, they've been so fired up about this. They just want to see a spurt to get going here. Kentucky has something to say about that. Tell you one thing about Kentucky, man, their fans travel with them. More passionate fans than any college team in America. Harris drives it. Gives it up to Jones. Five to shoot. Mason Jones, fadeaway three. In and out. The tap, not there, but a foul call. Working the offensive glass, only the second offensive rebound for Arkansas, and that'll get Jimmy Witt to the line. But Jim, Jim, Jimmy Witt really goes after the ball there with the left hand. He gets knocked to the deck. He's the guy that's got to step up. He's too good to have blanks in that, that stat sheet. And we see the impact of if you can get Nick Richards caught on a switch and at least get him away from the basket, maybe your smaller players have a chance to go get an offensive rebound. I like that coach with shoes. I'm going to tell you, for a guy that had to go through what you did today, my first text I got from you was about 6 a.m., unbelievable. You're stranded in Chicago, and here you are doing a great job. I want to say, Bruce Beck sent a beautiful, a, a beautiful text message about what a job you're doing. Thanks. Bruce, as you know, fine broadcaster down there in the New York area. He likes you too. Arkansas has got oh, it down to seven. This crowd wants it so bad, you can feel it. 
And they're going to come up with stops. Oh, he had post position inside. He's Zhang too strong. The rebound loose. Sestina comes away with it. The extra pass. Zhang settling it down as quickly. Zhang getting clear time. See, John Calabari's rewarding somebody that produces. If you produce, John Calabari will play it. Hagen's away from the screen and a beautiful reverse. He finished there. The Euro step, little Dwayne Wade going to the rack, scoring. Foul called on Juzang. Great, great story, unbelievable story on John Calipari's son was in ESPN. Terrific story. Dick, we're going to have some fun after the break. I've got a question for you. Some resurgent programs, which ones have surprised you? I'll let you ponder that and get your answer when we come back from the break. Hey, we're looking at college basketball right now. We got San Diego State. They're the only unbeaten team. I talked to their coach this week, and let me tell you this. Brian Dutcher told me he has a new theory. Yes, this theory is very simply. They don't mind taking 50-year players. In fact, he's got three that are really contributing big time right now. One is leading him in scoring. Malachi Flynn, 16 points a game, came from Washington State. <laughs> Well, Dick, I was going to ask you, fortunate or unfortunate, about the surprise teams. I think we know your opinion on it. It's fortunate for college basketball. But I want to press you a little bit more. Biggest surprise, Seton Hall, Penn State, or Rutgers this season? I would say Rutgers. You know, Penn State's got some good players. I think this is the year they can really celebrate. And this was a big win today, beating Ohio State. They beat them kind of easily. I think they're going to dance for the first time in Pat Chambers' career up there with Penn State. A Seton Hall, they're a legit contender. The legit contender to win it all. Miles Powell will be an absolute contender for National Player of the Year. Had a tough game today against Mike Anderson and St. John's. Down 13 at the half, but came back and won. A steal by Jones, and he will go to the free throw line as he drove it right back to the basket. Foul called on Ashton Higgins. How about the job though Steve Peichel's done at Rutgers? Rutgers hasn't been to the NCAA tournament in my lifetime. Since 1991. I know they went there years ago, and Tom Young was there, and had Mr. Dabney and Mr. Sellers, who I got to know well. At least it feels like my lifetime. Yeah, it's 1991 was the last time. Did my little research. You see, I'm gonna That's try very to keep, good. I'm going to try to compete with you. You're so sharp, it's unreal. Unbelievable. Tonight, UFC 246 in Las Vegas features Conor McGregor's long-awaited return to the octagon to take on notorious Cowboy Cerrone. He holds the UFC record for most wins and most finishes. Starts at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific in the main event on pay-per-view. To order the main card in English and Spanish, ESPNPlus.com slash PPV. And be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on your mobile device. By the way, ESPN and ESPN Deportes will have the prelims starting at 8 Eastern, you know, 5 the, Pacific. The VBD items are really get involved in that. But I personally, I, reading some of the stuff going on, Cowboy, baby. The Cowboy's going to win that over McGregor. Sustina McGregor's goes gonna, over the back. You know, McGregor's got a lot of chatter, a lot of talk. He's like Beckham in football. Talk, talk, talk. And they don't produce on the field. They don't win. <laughs> and he's not going to win. I'll tell you one thing, though, with Beckham. I'll say this. That's crazy about criminal cases or tapping a security guy in the locker room. Come on. We got big crimes going out there. That's absurd. Going to go to court and waste time with lawyers and all. Well, Give me it, a break. It, it's been announced no charges will be oh, solved. good, good. So That's all is good. well there. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I knew you'd solve it. Jones is fouled by Higgins. So the foul's piling up a little bit in the second half for Kentucky as it will be free throws the rest of the way for Arkansas as Kentucky already over the limit five minutes into the second half and now Ashton Higgins picks up his fourth so he'll go to the bench you think for quite some time well you know Ashton certainly didn't play well <coughs> against South Carolina uh, John Calipari made that very clear <coughs> said it was one sequence about three minutes you know you expect so much we've talked about how Ashton's one of the premier defensive guards in America along with like Trey Jones who will see the second game after our game those guys have a reputation and people expect them to perform on a regular basis and he didn't focus and they got hurt they lost a 14 point lead now they had a lead here in this game it's no danger time you know I want to shoot a free throw I want to get this in here I see John Robick sitting on the bench John Robick beautiful guy he's been with John Calipari forever his daughter needs a liver transplant. 
His daughter Haley, 27 years of age, getting married in June. She had a tumor, cancer tumor. Why we worked so hard trying to raise money, help people like that. But John wanted to say thank you to all the fans. There's over 1,000 people that have signed up to be tested to see if they have a match for her liver. John well, Robeck says thank you to all. Let's say a prayer that that produces the desired results. Speaking of desired results, there's Keon Brooks for Kentucky, and that keeps the lead at eight. You know, guys like Brooks, they're expecting them to be positive forces. That was a beautiful baseline drive right there by Brooks. Dick, to what you were saying, you were one of those people who tweeted about it. It's because of people like you and everyone else that got the social media stuff going. As you said, over a thousand people, so much so that the hospital has said, hey, we can't keep having people if you can take a break because in 10 days, Haley's going to go get tested and see if any of those have been a match. But what a wonderful response and hopefully the outcome that they're hoping for. Yeah, let's really hope for that big time. <clears throat> John and his family, it's a tough time. It's a tough time what you have to go through when you got a loved one battling that dreaded disease. It affects everyone, it's a difference maker to one's life. That's why I work so hard for kids trying to raise money. It's unbelievable what you say. I told you I spoke at a funeral several months ago for a three-year-old, breaks your heart. They gotta come with some stops right now, baby. Shot clock to five. Maxi creates space, steps back off the top of the backboard. And finally, controlled by Arkansas, here comes Jimmy Witt. Step back for Sills. That hit the shot clock, so that's out of bounds. Yeah, Sills been a guy, <coughs> streaky shooter, streaky shooter, came in with a reputation, three point shooter. Statistically, it hasn't shown, but Musselman said he's very, very capable. I mean, this game is far from over, man, far from over, but they're going to have to start doing a better job getting shots they want for guys like Joe and Jones. Got Higgins on the sideline. You got to try to take advantage of that. So Max is going to probably raise his game. Sestina hands one off to Brooks. That's out of bounds as he missed the connection with Montgomery who was cutting to the front of the rim. That's the one player that's got to step up for Kentucky. If they are going to be a really legit threat to cut the nets down, they need Montgomery to raise his game like his buddy Richards has raised his game. Yeah, look at the four-minute mark right here. You know, you shoot one for five. It's pretty tough to get back in, but Kentucky didn't help themselves either. They're going two for six. Isaiah Joe. That won't go. Can't rebound. Can't get second shots. Well, you mentioned four minutes. It's been over four minutes since Arkansas last made a basket, and yet they're still only down by eight, and Kentucky just turned it over as Maxi was off the mark on the alley-oop pass. Well, both clubs getting after defensively. Both these coaches known for their defensive teachings, get players to play hard. John Calipari, he tell you, he eats, sleeps, drinks the game just like Musselman does. These guys are basketball lifers. And recruiters, you know, Musselman's got one of the top six classes in the country. How about the play by Montgomery? Great, a terrific strip block of Jones. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a layup for Jones, and Montgomery made a great play. Now quickly we'll run the point with Hagens and Maxey both sitting down. Juzang getting a lot of PT play of time. Quickly off a screen, short, another offensive rebound. Right back to quickly. His floater comes up short. And that time it's Jimmy Witt to pull it down for the Hawks. That's Witt trying to attack. Straight away, Cho. Long rebound right back to him. Sills snuffed in the lane by Keon Brooks. Brooks with a good defensive play, showed his athleticism. I don't think Witt has scored a field goal yet, has he? Coming off a 30-point game, man. They'd like to get some of those baskets. Has he scored yet, Bob? He is 0 for 5 from the field. Wow. They got to get something out of him. I like seeing kids like Juzang come on a court, get some good play in time, make the most of it. There he is right there. Short that time. Tapped around. And a better job on the glass. Cleared by Mason Jones. Seems like an eternity. Here is Jones going to the basket. Takes the bump. And one. Strong. Strong. Talk about physicality. Talk about strength. Oh, wow. He made like a little Sidney Moncrief. 
Oh, my feet. There he goes. Man, my mind previous to attack. Just talked to my boy Jimmy Dykeson, he'll tell you. Back, Eric Musselman always trying to learn how to be a better coach. So during his downtime, he visits other coaches. He was in Tampa visiting John Gruden and found this idea of visualization and using posters to teach his players. So today during shoot around, they have these huge posters, defensive keys, offensive keys scouting reports on all the opposing players. They put them out on the floor to learn how to guard. They also would bring a TV. They'd run plays from their opponents. I asked him about it. He said, hey, in today's generation, you got to learn how to get at your guy's attention. Sometimes it takes seeing things. Dick, I want to ask you, with today's kind of kids, the way that they learn today's social media, what do you think about using those visualizations to try and grab their attention? Well, I think it's great, anything you do, but I like the John Wooden better way. Go out and get a Bill Walton and get a Louis Alcindor, <laughs> known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, or I like better also the way that Duke does it, get one of those more big-time All-Americans, the Williams Cincy Company. I mean, that's the better way. Posters are nice, but give me Walton and give me Jabbar. Well, it's also nice is a three-point play just completed by Mason Jones. The lead down to five. Maxi, chest bumps on his way to the baseline. He was. There's no doubt about it. The referee standing right there. He bumped him. See where uh, Florida State had another big win today. They had a win on the road against Miami in overtime. And I'll see Miami where Reese Davis and I are going to be there against Duke on Tuesday night. I know the crowd didn't like the call, but to be fair, that's the second foul called on Arkansas in the second half. Kentucky's already over the limit. Sestina, too strong. I love Mason Jones, man. I love him. He can play for me any day of the week. A little slip on that rebound when he came down, and he got up with a little hitch in his giddy-up, so let's see if he's hurt. They're going to have some size next year, Arkansas, with their recruiting class. Paul Biancardi has a number six. There's oh. a three from the corner, buried by Jalen Harris, and it's a two-point game. That'll wake up the crowd. Here they come. Here they come. Whoa, big suey. Oh, we said it wasn't over, baby. Here come the Razorbacks. Remember this, Higgins is out with those four fouls. He's at the scorer's table now. Yeah, no use keeping him on the bench. Mid-range jumper is perfect for Maxi. I tell you, Maxi likes the big stage. The more the lights are on, he had 26 against Michigan State. Louisville in the big game, he has 27. That's Dick Vitale. I'm Bob Wachusen. Chris Budden with us as well. Midway through the second half here in Fayetteville. Kentucky has led most of the game. And now it looks like a moving screen is going to be called. Now check that. Just an offensive foul on Mason Jones. Third team foul on Arkansas here in the second half. And you mentioned the ACC a short time ago with Florida State. Well, how about this sonic blockbuster in the ACC coming up as soon as we're done here? At Arkansas, Duke, Louisville, at Cameron, the top two teams in the conference get together in our Saturday prime game coming up next. I think it's very dangerous playing Duke after a loss. They were upset by Clemson, and now Louisville's going to get their best, best shot, no doubt about it. Carey and Warris are only two guys up for player of the year in the ACC. Maxie can't knock down the three. Isaiah Joe's only got six points. Shovel pass underneath and a foul call as Sestina came over to challenge Bailey. You know, the bottom line is they're down four, right? And you just mentioned Joe, one of the premier scorers, struggling scoring, and also win. And yet they're right there with a chance really to get back in terms of win this game. Now, Jimmy Witt averages about 15 a game. He's 0 for 5 from the field. He's got two points. So please don't tell anybody that. What are you going to repeat that? Isaiah <laughs> Joe averages about 18 a game. He's got six. Another missed free throw as now Arkansas is 9 for 16 at the line. Yeah, that really is a nightmare to you. When you're really struggling because you can't rebound, don't have the size, well, you got to make up for it by being able to be efficient on the free throw line. Now, the one message that has gotten through to these Hogs, they're out-rebounding Kentucky 11-8 in the second half. 
but another miss at the line, although an offensive rebound and a stick back by Reggie Cheney will work. Oh, Cheney with a tremendous effort there. We don't get the two at the charity strike, but we get it with the offensive rebound. That's Kentucky, should not allow that to happen. John Calabrese will be very upset with that. Joe with the steal. They try to force that into Richards. Defense rotated over. Sills snuffed out by Richards. Hagan's the other way. Looking for quickly. He can't finish. That's blocked off the backboard. What a play in transition by Cheney. Cheney made a great defensive effort there. And here's Cheney. And he finds Isaiah Joe. Under nine minutes to go. Got to get a screen up there for Joe. There comes the screen. This guy can shoot the three. He stepped out, hedged. Jones to oh. win, and he tried to throw it down. Couldn't finish, but draws the foul. Do you think this place would explode if he would have thrown that down? Wow. SEC action, baby. Life in the SEC. You don't know what to expect. Just ask Hallburn today. Now watch the block defensively. Look at the angle. Cheney, tremendous angle right there. Cheney has a great angle on that block shot. And then they come up with the ball. Now he wanted to duck left. Bam! Goes up. He rises. He's like the elevator man. I wish I could bounce like that. I would have loved to dunk a ball. I was dunking in my house in a little three-foot basket. That's only the first foul on Richards. Montgomery back in. Brooks as well as Hestina and Richards sit down for Kentucky. A this, chance now for Jimmy Witt to tie the game. This is a big, big game. I mean, a really big game. In Two ways. For Kentucky, coming back after a loss, trying to avoid losing two in a row. And for Arkansas to get R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect, baby. Respect. They will be nationally right if they can win this game. Oh, they're fired up. Their fans are fired up. What a passion in this building. You're going to love it, Bob. You're going to love it. We're still with money getting paid sitting here. Look at the emotion. What did Bill, what did Musselman tell us? Coach Musselman told us, Eric said, you know what we're good at? A lot of deflections. We really play the passing lanes. And how true that is, makes up for the lack of size. Remember, Higgins got four fouls now. Whoever he's guarding, I would attack him. Oh, he got bumped. He got and the bumped. foul is called on Cheney. Yeah, not a good foul there. But I went on the other end. Whoever Hagens is guarded, I would put that player that he's guarded in an attack mode. Kentucky led by as many as 11. Arkansas has not led since we had about 15 and a half minutes to go in the first half. You know, John made a good move, I thought. Calipari, a lot of coaches would have kept Hagens on the sideline. He saw momentum swing, and he immediately brought in Hagens with about 11 minutes to go. Now a foul called on Kentucky, and moving screen's going to be tagged to E.J. Montgomery, I believe. That was a good call. You cannot move. That's four for him. Once again, John Calipari is looking for a flop call. And it may be a technical foul oh, by John does. Calipari. It's a little team. Anthony Jordan just teed up Cal. Oh, he may get thrown out. John, watch out. Calm down, John. Calm down. His assistant should get him away. Get him away. He's, he's out of here. Oh, he's out of here. What do I say? He's out of here. Coach Barbie was trying to warn John. He walked over to him. He's got a hell of a staff there. When you look at somebody, Coach Barbie, you look at John Robeck, Kenny Payne, Coach Justice. They got a really outstanding basketball okay. staff. And Even now, with John Calipari back in the locker room, this team will be well coached in the last absolutely. eight and a half minutes. Yeah, because he delegates well to the staff. But let's face it, he's the leader. He's the guy that sets the tone. He's been doing that's why he's a Hall of Famer for years. He's been winning. You know, momentum right now has definitely swung Arkansas's way.
got to make these free throws, Bob. They've got two more coming because that was a double technical foul called on John Calipari. Said that he's going to get ejected. He kept coming at him, come close. He didn't want to back away. He didn't want to back away. And still another free throw to be shot by Mason Jones. And then Arkansas, of course, will have the ball. He's two for three. The assistant's got to step up and make sure you get him away from that striped shirt. You got to get him away from the striped shirt. I want to see his assistants right there. Too late now. Too late now. Higgins trying to escort him. John is such a fiery competitor. I mean, this guy is all about today. Not about all the great wins he's had over the years, all the titles, and we'll hear, titles. We'll hear what he has to say afterwards, but it seemed like just about every time he went back and forth with the officials, he wanted a flop call yeah. on a call that was going against Kentucky. You know, also not happy right now. A little frustrated with the way they have played here in the second half. Under eight to go. It's a 13-2 Arkansas run. Desi Sills, the touch pass to the corner to Jones. That's off the side rim, and Montgomery pulls it down. Montgomery and Hagens both on the floor, playing with four fouls. And now, who runs the show for Kentucky? It's a, Mr. Barbie. I think he gave Trolls to be a head coach. Hagens to the goal, lays it in. Nice drive by Hagens. In the past, he would not convert. He'd missed so many drives to the goal. That was a concern in theirs. This year, he's been a lot better with that. See, now he's got four fouls, and there he is up top. He's guarding Jones right now. There's the first field goal for Jimmy Witt. Jimmy Witt gets on the board. Jimmy Witt, that's a big plus for them. I was on ESPN Radio here in Arkansas. And that's all I talked about was Jimmy Witt. He's an old-style player. No threes. Scored 30 without making the three. Nice pass. Montgomery allows the flyby and draws the foul. Should have went quicker, <coughs> quicker there. <coughs> he would have had himself a layup. So it will be free throws for E.J. Montgomery when we come back. But Arkansas down by 11 at one point has come back to take. A 49-46 wow. lead. The stretch run here in Fayetteville coming up. Wow. Back here in Fayetteville, Bob and Dick Vitale, Chris Budden, John Calipari has been ejected by the officials. Watch the right side of your screen. Montgomery basically standing still. That bump by Montgomery was called an illegal screen, and that was, I think, the final straw for John Calipari. That's the one that put him over the top. Yeah. And then this ensued. They made a bad call. There was no screen violation there by Montgomery at all. Made the bad call, but then they compounded it with the T, and then he earned the second one by not backing away. Frustrated. So he's still going at it. Still going at it. But he had a legit gripe about the call on my government. Well, I got six minutes to go and change. It's only a little bit right now, Kentucky. Witt picks up his dribble. And three seconds is called as he picked up his dribble in the lane. How often do you see a three-second call? You don't see too many, but there was no doubt there. That was like six seconds. Didn't realize where he was on the floor. Looks like Tony Barbie's the guy in control. Probably going to coach by committee here. Oh, look at the foul inside. Oh, they're going to get him. Not going to get away with that one. Oh, there was no doubt about that call. Montgomery threw him to the depth. He threw him to the depth. There's no doubt about it. And that will wow. foul E.J. Wow, Montgomery out. Are you out. kidding me? you got four fouls. If you do that, you got to know what's going on in the game. He's a valuable player to this team with his size. I mean, he got four fouls. I mean, I got one eye and I can see that. Well, Nick Richards only has one foul. He's back in the game, so. 
That's a pretty good substitute for Kentucky. Air ball from the corner, way off the mark for Isaiah Joe. Well, Isaiah Joe's too good a shooter to shoot that. Gliding in and one. Score the bucket for Maxi. Maxi with the tremendous drive to the goal. He just exploded to the basket. I mean, you, you get a chance to win every time you're the floor with Maxi, Higgins, Quickly, and Richards. And watch Maxi right here. Watch the explosion. No hesitation. Right to the basket. He's from Texas, high school superstar. What a debut he had against Michigan State. And Chris Budden, what are you noticing over on that Kentucky bench with John Calipari now back in the locker room? Well, it'll be coaching by committee during that last timeout. Main voice was Tony Barbie because they were talking defense, needing to play more zone, which they haven't played a lot of this season. But because of the foul trouble, that's what they have to go to. But it will also be Kenny Payne, who's the associate head coach, as that other voice as well. Tony Barbie's got a lot of experience, the head, former head coach. Got some coaching on the floor as well by your leaders. Maxie puts Kentucky back on top under six minutes to go. There's that zone. A lot of big gaps in that zone. Shooting the three certainly is a plus for Arkansas if they get in a gap and seam of it. Mason Jones floats. That's no good. Nobody back. Ahead. Oh, nobody Maxie back. throws it down. Nobody back. Mr. Maxi loves the bright lights, loves the spotlight. High riser. Great release out of that zone transition. Jones for three. Hagen's right. the rebound. Right now, Moe has went to the side of Kentucky. Uncle Moe has swung to Kentucky side. Richards wants the ball. He's going to set a screen and roll with a basket. He wants the ball inside. He wants the ball. And a foul will be called on Jalen Harris. That was the last foul to give for Arkansas. So both teams shoot free throws the rest of the way. And they hope they shoot better than they've shot during the game. Eric certainly can't be happy, Musselman, with the defensive transition to allow Maxie to sneak out for that transition jam. How about the response, though, by a young Kentucky team? You lose your head coach, double technical foul, he's ejected, the building is coming apart at the seams, you give up the lead, and immediately then Kentucky responds with a 6-0 run, and they've got the lead back, and they've got Richards at the line, and now it's a 7-0 run. They got talent, man, they got talent. When you got talent, that's a big plus. Sports Center tonight after top-ranked boxing with Kenny Mayne and Zubin Mahenti. They'll have the UFC 246 post-fight reactions after Conor McGregor, Cowboy Cerrone, plus Lakers Rockets post-game and reports from the Titans, Chiefs, Packers, and Niners as it is Championship Sunday tomorrow. Sports Center after top-ranked boxing on ESPN and the ESPN app tonight. Nick Richards goes to the line, converts both. He's got to work on getting his buddy Montgomery. I was in the elevator with both guys today. Talk about size, but he's got to get Montgomery to play at the level he's playing at. Harris challenged by Richards. It was quickly there as well. Starting to get away here from Arkansas. Now down five. We're getting the winning time. Four minute mark. Richards trying to use his size underneath, and he's undercut by Desi Sills. So that will put Richards back at the line. He looked really good shooting the last two free throws. I like the development of quickly as well. Well, he went to the deck right there. He got really fouled and undercut, basically. And that foul sills out. All you big guys out there, you want to bring that ball down. You want to go, you don't want to go from a seven-footer to a guy 5'11". I got a lot of tip for guys too. You know when guys throw a pump fake? You throw a pump fake, we used to fill our players. He pump fakes, he's not shooting the ball. Watch his eyes, that'll tell you whether he's shooting the ball or not because when he's gonna go up to shoot, he's looking at the rim. As soon as he's looking at the rim, now you can go up. Don't leave your feet on the pump fake. Clinic 101. He's looking good on a strike, man. He knocked out three in a row. 69% on the season. His stock has gone up. 
Good rotation, four yeah. in a row. This is a player that averaged 5.1 points as a freshman, four points last year as a sophomore, 13 points and nearly eight rebounds a game this year for Nick Richards. Foul lane there is wide open in that zone. That zone has been really something. Joe for three. Rims it out. It's been all Kentucky since Sean Calabrese went in the shower. He went in the shower. It's all Kentucky. Hagans oh. is able to set up quickly. And now Arkansas needs a timeout. What a response by Kentucky. Incredible. Great effort. Keep their poise, patience, and points. The three Ps. Oh, they've been patient. Kentucky, John, we're going to win. Watch the right side of your screen. E.J. Montgomery, that little bump was called a moving screen. That was the final straw for John Calipari, who had had a back and forth dialogue, let's say, with the officials all afternoon. Well, everyone had had enough. John Calipari, not being held back by his assistants, picks up two technical fouls and was ejected from the game not long ago. But what a response by his young team after four free throws Part of a 13-2 Arkansas run, gave the Hogs the lead. Now it's a 10-point lead for Kentucky. Bob Shoes and Dick Vitale and Chris Button here in Fayetteville. Now, is there a chance that Arkansas has an answer? Well, they better get an answer quickly because it's trouble. Clock is winding down, less than four minutes. Jones gives it up. Witt, just too strong. Missed the bunny. 15-5 run since Calipari went to the locker room. 15-5, Kentucky responded, as you said, in a tough situation. Arkansas right there had all the emotion, and Kentucky's run has quieted the crowd down. Hagans with a save. Shot clock under 10. Hagans takes over with seven to shoot. He'll drive it and draw a foul. You know, years ago, Red Harbeck would get technicals to fire his team up. There's no way John Calipari did that deliberately, but I'm telling you what, it seemed to have given a spark to his team. It's got that team ready to perform, and they've performed well since he's gone. A 10-point lead for Kentucky. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Energy on the go. As Kentucky has put together a 13 0 run, Arkansas one for their last nine from the field, and most of that coming after John Calipari was ejected with a double technical foul. Absolutely, they came in and made some good plays. I thought the coaching staff did a great job rotating into the zone, trying to protect players that were in foul trouble, and it seemed to work very efficiently and very effectively. Hagans can't convert, tipped around. Who's got the loose ball? It is brought down by Bailey. The only chance for Arkansas to get back, they're gonna knock down a couple of quick threes. They gotta get some threes going. The zone's playing off the soft on top. Isaiah Joe runs the baseline. He still is stuck on six points for three here. That's no good. Isaiah Joe is now two for seven from three-point line. Well, they missed 90 in their last 10 shots. Kentucky taking time off the clock now. Veteran guard Hagan's had he's played the whole 10 minutes with four fouls. He's played really in a cerebral. Uh, way about him. Good IQ in his basketball. Brooks leans in and scores. Kentucky just not going to be denied it looks like. 15 and 0 run. Are you kidding me? There's a reverse put home by Isaiah Joe. His first bucket in a long time. He's got eight. First bucket for Arkansas in a long time. See, tough now with these guards that can handle the ball. Trying to get some turnovers out of them. Rich does a good job, gives him a release man, steps up high for the ball. Double up on the ball, spread the court, good spacing. Five to shoot. 
Maxi floats one up, and Richards throws it down. Well, great two-man play right there. Maxi and Richards together. Great eye contact, smile on Maxi's face. He knows they're in pretty good shape, up 12 with, with a minute 40. And with Desi Sills and Mason Jones both fouling out for Arkansas, where does the offense come from? Well, it's going to be Joe, obviously. Foul called on Richards as Jimmy Witt will go to the free throw line. Seemed like Uncle Mo really changed big time when they took the lead. John Calabari gets ejected. You felt right then the crowd was electric. You felt right then that it was certainly an advantage for Arkansas. This two-man game between unbelievable Maxi with the lob up on top. Good vision. Getting the ball up to Richards. Richards is a different player than we saw him earlier this year. We'll be out there. We're going to Kentucky to Lexington. Can't wait to go. It's always great to go there. Their fans are so into it, care so much about basketball. We'll be there, Rob, for the Florida game. Florida at Kentucky. And Florida looks like a different challenge now than they may appear to have been a few weeks ago. Absolutely. They're, they're rounding into shape. Hagan's on the dead run, gets it in the front court, and now he'll work the clock. One Hard thing pass as Brooks threw it at the knees of Richards. You got to give John Calipari this. The fact that he put Hagens back in the game when momentum went the way of Arkansas with about 11 minutes left in the game, 10, I think 10 maybe in 50 seconds, put him in. He's played the whole game since then with four fouls. Harris can't connect from three. Tapped around. And a foul will be called. And a tough luck foul at that on Reggie Chaney. He got caught in midair and ended up on the back of Keon Brooks. You know, Kentucky's got a great class coming in. We know that. I mean, regularly, John what else is, new? <laughs> is a recruiting machine. But also, Arkansas has got a lot to look forward to. Next year, they got a really good big guy, 6'9", Jalen Williams coming in from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Devontae Davis coming in from out of Jacksonville, Arkansas. They got a kid, Robinson, point guard from Oak Hill Academy. I mean, they got some good players coming in. Came out in Moser Moody, another outstanding player at 6'6", from Little Rock. I'm telling you, things are really in good shape here at Arkansas. Eric Musselman is a winner. That's what he did over at Nevada for four years. He was unbelievable. Kept getting better and better and better. Kentucky certainly took the crowd out of the game. Joe connects from three. It's not over yet. 1-10 to go. Here comes some Arkansas pressure. And Hagens is fouled. And now you see the value, Dick, of having those three-point guards. It's almost an impossible team to trap in the backcourt. Yeah, to trap or try to force the turnover. Yeah, three guys can handle the ball really well. <laughs> you know, teams would like to do it, but you got to have the talent. These three guys are big-time recruits. I mean, you're talking Hagens quickly and suddenly Maxi. I mean, we're not talking about average players. We're talking about coming out of scholastic ranks with a big-time reputations. Don't get too many Wendy hamburgers down here. They get McDonald's, baby. They get Mc I'm not saying McDonald's better than Wendy's, only in the terminology in the world of basketball. In basketball, a McDonald's All-American stands for greatness. I'm not trying to demean Wendy's. Joe comes up short for three. They got some good French fries, too. Oh, if, if any of those folks would like to drop off some samples, I'm game. Well, my friends, you got a scoop. <laughs> You got to scoop, my friend, if they're going to come back and win this game. They're going to come back and win the game. Yeah, that you might have been it. You got a major scoop. Because right now it has all been Kentucky since the minute that Mr. Calipari went to the shower. It has been Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky. Is there a chance that was calculated? Is there no. a chance John Calipari no. was trying I to doctor that situation? His assistants didn't go anywhere near him. I don't know if he told them, hey, you guys stay over there. I'm going to go do this. But I, boy, did his team respond after he got kicked out of the game. There are situations where certainly coaches want to get out to fire their teams up. It's happened in the past. I don't believe that was one. I really don't. Well, if it wasn't, even if it had the desired effect by accident, it did. that was Absolutely. really the, the line of demarcation in this game. Kentucky became a different team after he got kicked out. You know, please don't use words like demarcation. I don't know what that means. Well, it's, I don't it's know. the line oh, it's where the something line. was oh, happening before it, and the then line. after it, something oh. different happened. 
Follow me on Twitter, will you? <laughs> Twitter slash the Gibby. Hey, you know I what? do. You know what I want to get out here, though? Really? Oh, boy. I got a perfect moment. I got to get this out. Today in the lobby of the hotel we stayed at the graduate, uh, mom came over with her son. Her son is McKay, just a great kid. Gregson, he made national publicity in 2014. He's a special needs youngster. And they put him in a game on senior day at this high school. On the basketball team. Yeah, Prairie Grove High School, right here in Arkansas. They put him in the game, and McKay made a three-point shot that really went viral. It was unreal. I know I sent him a basketball and shirts and all that jazz and books. And the mom came to say hello, to take a picture, and I did. And I was able to hustle somehow, two tickets, and they're in the arena today. But just a beautiful story, and McKay is now helping coaching the elementary school at Prairie Grove, and they call him Coach McKay. And his face lights up when they say Coach McKay. Just a beautiful, beautiful story. He's here with his mother, Gretchen. Emmanuel quickly to the line with 43 seconds to go. You know, John Calipari, I'm sure if you chart, I have not charted. They lost back-to-back -back this year to Utah and to Ohio State when Ohio State was really up on top. But the bottom line is, I'll guarantee if you look at his career or Coach K's career or Roy Williams' career, except this year, because this is not vintage North Carolina, not at all. And they're going to be back bigger than ever next year because they got a tremendous class coming in. So people better beat on them now. But if you look at the cl class of those guys and look at their records, they don't lose back-to-back -back too often. Not a healthy thing playing them after a loss. Well, this will make Kentucky 53-13 and 13 under John Calipari following a loss. Oh, you see, you're on top of him. Oh, man. I mean, this guy's unbelievable. I, We're not, that, that's just the, the Vital Bald Dome Index wow. has had such an impact on me has? over oh, these wow. last several years. <laughs> I just I know where you're going. You're right on top of it, man. See, That's pretty good, though. 53 yeah. and 13 if they hold on and win this game today if following they, a loss. If they hold on, Mr. Kipling, I know. Well, smiling. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a Knicks fan. I remember Reggie Miller. Yeah, Reggie. That's right, Reggie. Now we've got a potential swinging of the elbows on this last exchange. So they're going to go to the monitor just to make sure that there isn't. You mentioned Reggie Miller. Spike Lee certainly remembered him too. And just to let you know, if you are looking for our next game, of course, Duke and Louisville coming up next. It is starting over on ESPN News, and it will shift over to ESPN as soon as we're done here in Fayetteville. So Louisville Duke underway, and they're going to get that game started over on ESPN News. <laughs> swinging of the elbows to try to see if there's any swinging of the elbows. And right there, as quickly was fouled, they're just double checking to see if that might be some type of a flagrant foul as he bumped Isaiah Joe. 60 seconds, right? The game, 60 seconds. You got the buzzer beater up on him to see if they can make a call quickly. So far, each time they have gone to the monitor today to take a look at one of these situations, they've come over and told us, basketball play, play on. Right. This is probably at least the third, maybe the fourth time they've gone to the monitor to see if maybe there should be a flagrant foul called. And not once have they actually come away with a flagrant call. So Wednesday night, Kentucky saw a 14-point lead disappear, and it disappeared wow. completely. Wow. And Jermaine Cousinard knocked it down for South Carolina at the buzzer. How about the response now by Kentucky? Losing their head coach to a double technical foul ejection today and losing an 11-point lead at one point today and falling behind in the second half here at Arkansas to respond down the stretch, and it looks like they're going to find a way to win this game. Well, some smiles there, certainly. They should be smiling. You know, they had a five-game winning streak was snapped by South Carolina. They've held 10 of their last 12 opponents under 70 points. 
They got another one, it looks like, right now. So their defense is stepping up. On a nine-point game with under 40 seconds to go, I would say someone of this group of officials needs to realize, guys, let's make a decision, come away from the monitor, and move on. I'm going to give some technicals out here. It's too long to come up with these decisions. They take it forever. Forever. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's play ball. All right. Let's play I ball. I think we're going to get an explanation. So they did come away with a flagrant one foul as quickly swung the elbow. So it is a foul initially on Arkansas, but it is a flagrant one foul called against Kentucky on that exchange after they went to the monitor. Procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. This thing should have been in the books, tucked away five minutes ago. So Isaiah Joe to shoot two. And with 36 and change to go, I guess he quickly, can cut the lead down to seven. Quickly through the elbow a little too quickly. Oh, well done. I see what you did there. <laughs> Might be too little too late for the Hogs, but you never know. Seven-point lead, 36.5 remaining. Well, that's happened in the career of Dean Smith. He's pulled some magical moments over the years when he was at North Carolina, Hall of Famer. They got to hit a quick three right here. What's the delay now? Will you tell me what? I'm still talking. To, come on, man. Everybody's falling asleep. Let's play basketball. So Arkansas with the ball down seven with just over a half minute remaining. I had to call my buddy Bob Delaney up. He's a great, was a great official in the NBA and now works in the SEC. And he's got to get these babies to move a little bit. What, what he's still talking, still conversation. I want to see basketball. People want to see Duke and Louisville. Let's go. I'm starving. I want to eat too. Let's go. <laughs> you got to give me some food. Joe through a double team. Hit. Straight away, Bailey. Can't hit the three. Offensive rebound for Isaiah Joe. Isaiah Joe Jones, they're good players, man. Step back three, that won't go. Bailey's follow is good, plus the foul. Now the crowd wakes up. 22 seconds to go. Maybe that delay put Kentucky to sleep. Adriel Bailey has a chance to cut the lead down to four. It might have put Kentucky to sleep. They thought the game was over, rolling. Got a little tired, and they still keep battling and battling. Oh, now it looks like the Cats are going to call a timeout. And maybe that's the message from the coaching staff to the players. Hey, guys, let's wake up and realize that we can't just go through the motions here in the last 30 seconds as there's a chance they're going to be facing pressure, trying to inbound the ball with only a four-point lead. Absolutely. you got to make sure right now, go for the steal, foul, and hope they miss some free throws. Well, tonight, UFC 246 in Las Vegas featuring Conor McGregor's long-awaited return to the octagon. The Notorious takes on Cowboy Cerrone, who holds the UFC record for most wins and most finishes, starting at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. It's the main event on pay-per-view. To order the main card in English and Spanish, head to ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on your mobile device. And ESPN and ESPN Deportes, by the way, will have the prelims starting at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. You know, I was wearing one of those cowboy hats for the game here. One of the fans there had one. Let me put it on. Had a little fun with it. Well, here, let's go. A little basketball here. Make these free throws. Bailey can't connect. And it's knocked out of bounds by Jimmy Witt. Wait. You're down right there by five. You got to convert those two, and then you get yourself a legit shot. Foul. You come back and maybe hit a three. It's into quickly, and he is fouled immediately by Jalen Harris. Crowd uh -huh. thought maybe a travel should be called, and it looks like Eric Musselman's on the same page as the fans are, but Harris is tagged with the foul. 
I like the way that quickly, quickly ran to the free throw line. I like the way that he went there with some confidence, ran right to that line. So give me the rock. I'm going to quickly put two in the book because I'm very quick. Well, he's 93% on the season, the sixth best free throw shooter in America coming into this afternoon's game. So what you're saying, that's the guy you don't want to put on that's the line. That's the guy that any Kentucky fan would want to see catch that ball. And they did a great job getting the ball to the right guy. Those are all the little coaching maneuvers that many fans don't understand. Get the ball. Look at a great stroke he has. Great rotation, follow through, the swat at the end. Now, you don't want to foul here at all. Let him Whip go to goes the goal. goes to the goal. Lays it in over Richards. Foul right away, man. Foul right away. Now they'll foul the freshman Keon Brooks. He's only a 61% free throw shooter. Quickly ran away from the ball. He quickly has got to step to the ball. One more last shot. I got to make sure as we look at John Robick and see him standing there. Want to thank everybody that stepped forward, signed up for a possible transplant for his girl, Haley. And in saying that, I also tell you, please, please help us raise money for kids battling cancer through the V Foundation. Just go to DickVitalOnline.com and you can get a raffle chance on a beautiful new Mercedes. $100 per chance at DickVitalOnline.com. Louisville's got the early two-point lead over Duke. We'll be heading there in just a moment as Isaiah Joe loses it out of bounds in the corner. Eight seconds to go. So now a mere formality for Kentucky to get through these next eight seconds. And they will have a heck of a bounce back win off of a heartbreaking loss Wednesday night at South Carolina. Yeah, they came back strong. And remember, remember this, they did it with their coach in the locker room ejected. And also, that second game you're going to follow right after this is going to be one heck of a battle. You talk about the ACC, those two teams certainly are right there. And don't forget Leonard Hamilton's Florida State Seminoles. Leonard Hamilton is making a mark that's unreal. He's in a top six in the history of the ACC in wins. You're not going to believe it. They're at the monitor. Not again. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, man. They've got how, a chance. How long is this taking to play? This? What are we going to do here? Come on, man. This is really <laughs> ridiculous. Come on. Hey, They've got go one more decision to make as to who should have the ball down deep in the corner. You know, they're really good officials. I mean, they've done a good job here, obviously, in terms of strategy and corporate. Going to the monitor is such a crutch. It's a crutch we've given these guys. Rather than make a decision decisively, make your decision, make your call. You don't have to run there every moment to try and verify what you're doing. I'm fed up with it. I can tell. I'm out of here. I'm going out. I'm taking my headset off. I'm going to eat. I'm starving. You know how long it's taken to play these last uh, six, seven minutes? What's it been, about 40 minutes? I see Chris Budden laughing their head off to my left. You, you, should, have been at, you should have been at the media buffet with me. Oh, you missed a heck man. of a meal. I didn't take it in here. I figured I could hold out for the game. <laughs> I thought the game would be over in like an hour 45. Isaiah Joe from NBA range. Can't back at home. Well, you're going to go to the monitor now see who got the rebound? It is a Kentucky win as finally wow. it is officially wow. in the books. Wow. So our final score. Here at Fayetteville, 73-66, Kentucky outlasts Arkansas. For Chris Button and Dick Vitale, I'm Bob Wischusen. It's time for Louisville.